We're going live now in second time when I give you a shout. Oh. College, Black Rock County Dublin for the second day of the Kate Russell 2019 tournament. This is the sixth game of the whole tournament today, first of this morning, and it's uh, Crescent College Comprehensive Munster Champions against Kalash Dignod, the Jays of Connacht Crescent. Sit second in the table on four points after a win and a draw from their first day to beat St Andrews 1 0 in the opening game of this year's competition, while the Jays sit bottom after two defeats from their two games. I'm joined again in the country backs by St Andrews uh, senior boys coach Ivan Ovid. And Ivan, we've we've seen five games. We've a clearer picture maybe going into today, but outside of the Jays, all the other four teams can still win this. Yeah, they can. Uh, like I've I've been thinking about this, um, and to be honest with you, no team in this tournament has convinced me yet. Um, like I haven't seen one team and go, yeah, they're they're going to win it, or, or or that's the team to beat. I think the difference is, I think, um, Crescent yesterday, I think their big player in Horan turned up um, and she provided a, a couple of big moments for them to get them back into the Bambridge game. Uh, she was instrumental in the Andrews game to get them a win. Um, but no, one, no one's been convincing. So I still think there's four teams definitely in this tournament. I think it is a must-win game for Crescent. Um, but... You know, Jez, to be fair, in the two games, they've two losses, yes, but they've shown they can be dangerous. And it's basically a big game again from Horan here. Can she produce, you know, the moments to, to get them to get them through this game? But but they're certainly the team that, you know, if I was to pick one team and I was going, I want to be in that position, I think Crescent are the team who are, who are really in the driving seat and it, it's their tournament now to, to just go and win. And it's immediately it's Jez playing from left to right and it's them in possession with their number 13 and that's Jenny Rowe. All comes all the way out to this right hand side and it's Fiona Kelly, one of the Jez's best players from their two games yesterday. Playing more on the right hand side but looks to be more in the middle today. Plays the ball to Rian Spillan and Spillan now in possession for the Jez. Looks for Kelly, it's half intercepted by Maeve McNamara for Crescent who scored all, their, both their goals in the competition so far. That's the Crescent number 10, it's going to be a free to the Jez early on here. The Jays played well in both games, but conceded a couple of soft goals and the heads dropped in both games after that. But had chances to score goals. They do carry a threat up front, mainly from Zaro Tool, from what we've seen in them two games. It's Claudia Griffin now in possession for Crescent. She's unable to keep control of the ball. It's going to be a sideline ball for the Jays. Their captain, Ethan McGovern, getting set to restart play here. Going to be another free to the Jays. So McGovern wearing number 11, was wearing number 3 yesterday. It's intercepted by Robin Lee, and Lee he plays it forward. And there's a chance here early on here for Crescent from Lee Cleary. Clearly showing goal. Out comes the Jazz keeper. Good bit of goalkeeping there from Anna O'Donoghue. It's not a good piece of goalkeeping from the Jazz keeper, Anna O'Donoghue. It's going to be a penalty for Crescent, a penalty stroke for Crescent. In the early stages, there a huge chance for Crescent to lay down a marker early on, Ivan. It is, it is, it's a, it's a, it's a huge chance. Um, stroke or not a stroke, I'm not sure, but my opinion is absolutely, totally irrelevant in this case. Um, but it, it's a, it's a huge chance here. I think early on we just see Jez pushing up there, and there's space in behind, and I think that will suit uh, Crescent very nicely. I think there's probably goals there if, if that continues. So, They've got to make sure that they fill that backspace, but great opportunity here to go 1-0 up. That's going to be Leah Cleary. No mistake from Leah Cleary and Crescent have a lead here. Fine finish, Ivan. Yeah, no, very solid. You, you go with a stroke, you, you go high, right or left, or you go bottom corner, so that, that's, a, that's a nice finish, and, and that'll settle them down nicely, I think. Like Jez, they haven't scored a goal in this uh, in this tournament yet. So if uh, if Crescent can do their stuff stuff defensively, there, there's evidence there early on. There's room in behind that Jez defence. So you know I don't I don't see the whole match going without Horn getting in behind or or Cleary getting in behind again. So no, that's a great start for Crescent. Great start. It's an interception as the Jez look for a goal themselves by Ife Hickey from Crescent. It's going to be a free. It's actually been reversed now. It was going to be a free for Crescent, but if Hickey deems too strong in the tackle, it's going to be 
McGovern to take this free for the Jazz. Yeah, perfect start for Crescent, just what they would have been looking for early on here in this opening game. McGovern now with a long strike, that's going to go wide. No danger there in the Crescent goal for Amy O'Hearn. That's going to be restarted by Georgia Keane, the Crescent number three. Plays it to Emer Lane. Lane decides to go backwards to Keane again. A lot of Crescent's playing defence goes through Keane, we've seen from the first two games. Went over to Amy O'Byrne there, who's in place of, instead of Crescent number two, Sarah Barry, who suffered an unfortunate injury yesterday, that's ruled her out for the rest of the tournament. So Byrne now again plays it back to Keane. Across the middle to Robin Leahy. Leahy now under pressure from the Jets, but does well. Brings the ball back into the Deans. Claudia Griffin gets the ball away. Good pass, and it's Anna Horn in space. In fact, it's not. It's Emer Lane. Lane now back to Leahy. Got someone on her outside. It's Aoife Hickey. Aoife Hickey felt that was too far for her. She was never going to chase that down. It's going to be a Jez ball. It's going to be Jenny Rowe to take. Oh, now plays the ball forward, looking for Gillian Downs. Downs now, good ball forward again from Downs. Chance here for Aoife Quinn, wearing number 19. And it's going to be another free for the Jazz. Jazz now looking, as I even mentioned a couple of moments ago, looking for their first goal. They'll need one to get back into this game. No goal from their two games, came close several times against Kilkenny, Kilkenny College in their last game. As Crescent come forward again, it's Anna Horn. Anna Horn looking for that true ball to Leah Cleary again. It's a good interception from Jenny Rowe, but it's falling to Cleary. Cleary now is Maeve McNamara inside the D. Good defending from McGovern. Scuppers that Crescent attack, and it's going to be a free out. Followed by Maeve McNamara. McGovern strikes. It's not a brilliant one, but she's got away with it. Good defending from Amy O'Byrne. And away come Crescent again. It's Ellie, Elle Sorensen now in possession. Sorensen plays it forward. Looking for Anna Horn. Good turn from Horn. But the Jez are back in numbers and it's Zara O'Toole to move forward for them. O'Toole looks for the clutch to number 10. The Jez number 10, Molly Kelly Greeley. Unable to find Greeley on this occasion. But the Jez had possession again. A foul by Aoife Hickey on McGovern. And once again, it's the Jez. The Jez now, Ivan, they need a goal, obviously. They haven't got one from the first two games. Came close, as I mentioned, on a couple of occasions. What do they need to do to get back into the game? Um, they they need to they need to get on the ball and, and start kind of connecting. They're turning over that ball far too quickly. Um, something that worries me from the Jazz point of view. It's a good sign for uh, Crescent though. Is there's a there's a huge gap between their defence. Like when Jazz are pressing, there's about a twenty yard gap between that midfield and their defence. And Horn is popping up in that gap in ten yards of space. And if they can get her on the ball in that space. I think we're constantly going to see a pattern where once they break the front six of Jez and get in behind that, there's so much space to play. So I think we're going to get Crescent just settling in here and then once they break that front six, I, I think they're going to start running riot here unless Jez can kind of slow down or, or that front six can really do their st stuff and turn over ball. But I think, I think there's goals in this game for Crescent, to be honest. It's going to be another Jez, Jez free. It's going to be McGovern to take. Crescent pushing forward in the early stage of this game, looking to build on that early goal that came from Leah Cleary's penalty stroke. I said the first of five games here today, live and exclusively on Sporting Limerick in the 2019 Kate Russell tournament. It's Anna Horn now for Crescent. Horn beats a couple of players, but deemed to have fouled. Fiona Kelly on that occasion. It's going to be a free out for the Jazz. McGovern strikes the ball forward, it's intercepted by Emer Lane for Crescent Lane now. Camille Keane gets a flick away on that occasion for the Jez, and the Jez another free. I think Crescent are going to be looking at this now, having got the early goal, they'll want to push forward and looking ahead to the rest of the tournament, they've got to be looking for more goals. Uh, they do, um, Andrew's got three goals yesterday um, against Jez. Uh, it could well come down to goal difference this tournament, Kilkenny are, are up there at the moment. Um, they're, they're just ahead of Crescent, uh, but if they can get if they can get a win here and, and put maybe three, possibly four goals uh, 
on the card. I think that would be a, a huge result uh, for Crescent because it's kind of going to it's it's as good as an extra point really if you can bag a few goals. Thoughts of Ivan Oving in the St Andrews Boys Coach here in St Andrews College, senior boys coach in St Andrews College here in Black Rock County Dublin, our host for these two days of the Kate Russell tournament. It's Crescent now possession through Ife Hickey gives it inside to looking for Robin Leahy, but it's intercepted and away come the Jays. It's Camille Keane in possession. Good run from Keane, brings her over the halfway. It's a fantastic run, eventually tackled by Claudia Griffin. A good tackle from the Crescent vice captain, and she's one of three. And good defending from Griffin on that occasion gives possession back to Crescent. It's going to be Robin Leahy to take this. Leahy now looks to her left again and finds Griffin. Griffin now back inside into the middle to Leahy. Leahy now beats Camille, shows good pace to beat one, looking to beat a second player. It's going to be a free to the Jays and away they come. Well, kind of a good block from El Sorensen. It's Fiona Kelly in possession. Kelly's away again here. Very impressive performer last yesterday, as we said. Vociferous Crescent have brought up bigger support for the second day of play in the Kate Russell tournament today. <laughs> Full bus has come up from the Limerick School and Leah Cleary on the run. It's a good run from Cleary. She's got Anna Horn making her way into the if she can find her. The Jays getting back in number, so Cleary might be advised to just look and what's behind her. She decides to go for Horn. She does win a free. It's a chance for Crescent now to attack, and it's going to be Aoife Hickey to take this. Hickey now on the run with it. Ran out of options fairly quickly there. It's an interception. It's Kelly for the Jays. As they look forward, she was looking for Zara too. It's going to be an easy interception for Georgia Keane. Good stick work from Keane. Sees her key possession. And Claudia Griffin now with the ball for Crescent. Just inside her own half. She passes. Good ball it is to Emer Lane. And Emer Lane finds Leah Cleary. Poor touch from Cleary. And it's Fiona Kelly. And it's a bit sloppy from Crescent in the last couple of minutes. As Fiona Kelly tries to take play away. But Crescent win it back. And just have to be patient here. Two of the Munster champions, of course, beat Mer Mount Mercy in that Munster final on penalty shuttles. Leah Cleary proving to be the hero. Along with El Sorensen. Sorensen getting the winning shuttle. And it's Crescent now building from the back. It's Griffin. Looks for Horn. Evades Horn's stick. But Sophie Klein is there trying to get it. It's going to go out over the end line. And Crescent just need to be patient. Need to get start building their attacks just that bit more patiently. They need to use the 20 yards either side of the pitch. Everything at the moment is just like you could chop off 10 yards either side and, and that's the only space. They're using the width of the D. They're, everything's coming down the middle, which is just making things scrappy. Jez are getting sticks in. That's where they're compact. So they need to, they're two centre backs, centre mid, need to get a hold of the ball and they need to start throwing a little bit of width on it. Like any time the ball's gone wide, they're in. They're in. It's 2 0 to Crescent. It's Sophie Klein with the finish in the end. Good bit of play there. Build up play by Crescent. All that little bit too easy. A valiant effort from Anna, Anna O'Donoghue. But that's a goal that's, that's a fairly easy one for Crescent, I think. It is. It is easy. And again, it's just like the, the defence is compact. It's a one pass that just goes wide at the defence and suddenly they're in. So if they can do that, if they can get that ball wide, but I'd, uh, I'd worry for Jez now. Um, because uh, Horn hasn't even sprung into life yet, you know, um, and and Crescent are two 0 up without doing a whole lot here. Like they they their attacks, they haven't built them unbelievably well, and, and they're two 0 up without doing a huge amount. So, like if they can if they can get hold of the ball and really start moving it and, and attacking Jez down the outside, um, and getting players up in support so that they can go outside, come back, and then switch it into the space. Um, well, that, then they could run riot here, but two 0 up uh, this early, uh, I'd be uh, I'd be very happy if I if I was Crescent. But but they they need to go looking for a few more goals. If they're there, go take them. Yes, yeah, two 0 for Crescent. It's Sophie Klein, their number nine, with the second goal, following up from Leah Cleary's penalty stroke. Excellent work from Robin Lee in the build up for that goal for Crescent. It's they, they go searching now for a third. It's Klein, their latest goal scorer in possession. She flicks it. It's Leahy again. Good tackle from Fiona Kelly and Lee on that occasion. And it's going to be a foul. It's going to be a Crescent free, I think. A Crescent free foul on El Sorensen on that occasion by Fiona Kelly. It's going to be Anna Horn to take. Horn looks backwards. 
finds Emer Lane. Lane puts it in, tries to put it into the D. Dangerous play, ball too high. And it's Aoife McGovern for the Jazz. That will restart playing this occasion. She looks to go long. Half blocked by Sorensen. It's going to fall to a Jazz player. And it's Kelly, but it's intercepted by Griffin. Finds Lane. It's Sarah Fitzgerald, the second year student, up on that right hand side for Crescent. Finds Klein. Klein looks to play Fitzgerald and down that right, but it's intercepted. And away come. comes Gillian Downs for the Jazz. And Downs plays it into middle. Bit of room now for Kelly. Kelly. As Zara Tool on the run through the middle, it's hit Claudia Griffin's leg. That's going to be her foot. That's going to be a free. That's the Jez on the attack again. It's a attempted ball. Looking for the run of Fiona Kelly. It's just too much juice on that, and it's gone out over the end line. And Crescent will restart play. It's going to be a sideline ball. Didn't go out over the end line. Says the umpire on this near side. And it's going to be Claudia Griffin to take. Plays it quickly and it's Robin Leahy. Finds its way to El Sorensen. Sorensen comes back inside and loses possession to Zara Tool. And Zara Tool is one of the biggest dangers on this team for the Jazz. She gets a. Uh, and it's, she got a flick to it to Zatul. It hits one of the Crescent players' legs and that's going to be a short corner for this Jazz. An opportunity, Ivan, for the Jazz to get back into this. Yeah, it is. Like That's, that's the first time that they've uh, got a player on the ball in the final third and isolated or one-on-one and, one and some nice skills to work in along the baseline and win a corner. So, look, Jez, they're not, they're not going to... I don't think they're going to really threaten Crescent here, but, you know, if they, can, if they can take these, like, any short corner, any opportunity that they get, they have to take it. Um, this is the first time they've been into the into the Crescent D. So, like, if they can take opportunities, if they can keep it tight, if they can just hang in there, well, maybe they give themselves a chance, you know, of a little counter, winning another corner, but they, they need to convert this. Had several chances against Kilkenny College in the last game, didn't work out. Goes straight to McGovern this time, it's out to Fiona Kelly. Kelly should get a shot away here. She does a good shot. Powerful strike from Fiona Kelly, it's too high. It goes to the right of the goal. But that's what we saw several times yesterday, the Jez make a mess of short corners, at least on that occasion they got a good shot away, a powerful shot from Kelly, but didn't trouble Amy, trouble Amy Hearn in the Crescent goal, and Crescent will come away again, it's a good pass from Sarah Fitzgerald, and Sophie Klein in plenty of space, she plays it forward, looking for Claire O'Mara, but it's too strong a pass, but again, as I've mentioned very early in this game, there's plenty of space in behind that Jez defence, and Crescent are going to keep looking for it throughout this game. It's going to be a restart for for the Jays and Aoife McGovern plays it out to Cuiva Cleary and that's Camille Keane it's Gillian Downs over on that far side wins a free and it's going to be left to Cuiva Cleary to take Cleary now wearing number 13 was wearing number 6 yesterday just to confuse us up in the commentary box there's been a few change of numbers on the on the Jays side we've managed to keep track of them so far but it's Crescent now in possession that's their number 14 Serena McDermott Serena McDermott comes back to Georgia Keane good stick work from Keane Averts the danger and it's out to Sarah Fitzgerald. She plays Sophie Klein and down the right. It's just not the most accurate for passes there from Sarah Fitzgerald. We have a stronger breeze as well, I'm noticing Ivan today, coming from right to left. Will that make much of a difference throughout the day? Uh, it will to us in the commentary box, <laughs> but not, not to the players on the pitch. Um, no, that won't, that won't have any effect. Um, like Later on in the day, if you get a bit of rain with that, you know it'll be a bit of a nuisance. But... No, the, the, conditions, the conditions are absolutely fine, absolutely fine. It's now Jez in possession again, it's Fiona Kelly, as we've seen already in the early stages of this first half. A lot of their play goes through Kelly down this right-hand side, and the more they can get Zaro Tool on the ball as well, it would be better for the Jez. She's a fantastic runner, she showed that on several occasions yesterday, and she's shown it again early on today, winning that short corner. It's Kelly's attempted pass is way too strong for O'Toole on this occasion, and it's going to be present to restart play. It's going to be Claudia Griffin there, number five, and vice captain plays it across to Georgia Keane. And Keane will find Amy O'Byrne on this right hand side for Crescent. Played into the centre for Robin Lee. This is a good move from Crescent out from their back. It's Sarah Fitzgerald. She's got Sophie Klein down the right hand side. She goes into Leahy instead in space. And some good attack here from Crescent. Great ball from Leahy. Big chance here for Falls to Claire O'Mara. Reverse chance. O'Mara's on him to get it out of the way. But Ivan, that's a fantastic bit of attacking play from Crescent. It's too easy. It's just too easy. To, like, you know, three, four passes and suddenly the whole middle of the pitch opens up. And that's a ball down the middle of the pitch for a forward. Like, the defenders, 
they, they're going to have to be much more vigilant tracking runners but, but that's far too easy that ball's been moved from back to front without Jez putting a stick on it something I noticed as well is that when they moved the ball wide on a previous attack the sweeper and the fullback there's a huge gap between them which is isolating the the crescent forward uh, short corner here for crescent but the the, the crescent forwards getting isolated on the Jazz fullback. The, the sweeper needs to get in contact there and double up on that player and try to slow that attack. So, like any time that crescent throw a little bit of width on this ball, the whole centre of the pitch and the opposite side is opening up. So if they can keep doing that, there there's plenty of uh, there'll be plenty of joy for the crescent midfielders and forwards as this game uh, goes on. Yeah, it's going to be crescent's first short corner of the game. It's going to be Georgia keen to take it. Over on that left hand side. And imagine Crescent setting up here looking for a third goal. It's going to be keen to take. A couple of players looking to trap this ball. It's come early to Sarah Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald has a strike. It's a good strike from Fitzgerald. That's a fine stop from Anna O'Donoghue. Low to her right. But I kind of don't think the Jets were expecting that move from Crescent Ivan. Yeah, no, it's just a little variation. It's, it's just one that assures you to uh, get a You can get a shot away from there. Angle's a little bit tight. Usually the ball will go to there and they'll, they'll look to fizz it across the face of the goal and probably bring in a couple of deflectors to get a touch. But um, it's, a, it's a solid one. We saw it yesterday with Bambridge where they, they played a similar corner, fizzed it across and got a stroke off it. So, no, it's a, it's a surefire way of getting a, getting a shot away. Plus, it, it affects your, the runners. Uh, so the, the Jazz runners, is, it's not something that you're, you set up to do. You, you set up to uh, run to the top of the G, so it kind of confuses the runners. So you can shift it out there, go square across to the far side, and something will open up on the left foot. Um, but uh, no, it's, it's a sure far way of getting a shot away, but that's a, that's a very good save for the Jazz keeper. It's Crescent back in possession over on that right-hand side, looking to bring the ball in again. And in possession, good bit of play here for Crescent. In and around the D, it was Robin Leahy again. Was cleared by Gillian Downs. Ziva Hickey re enters the fray for Crescent, their number seven. It's Crescent in possession, ball in to Claire O'Mara. O'Mara now has looked dangerous since coming off the bench. O'Mara winning a short corner for Crescent. And it's going to be the second opportunity for them to hammer home their advantage in the last couple of minutes with their second short cor corner in quick succession. And there'll be another huddle here deciding what they're going to do with it. It was a short one to Sarah Fitzgerald last time out. I wonder if they'll go more central on this occasion. It's going to be Georgia Keane again to take for this Crescent side. And this time it's Claudia Griffin picking up the position that Fitzgerald took. Of course, Fitzgerald is now off the field. Yeah, as, as Ivan points out next to me, Anna Horn's also off the field here temporarily. So it's Keane. It's going to be trapped. It's going to be Aoife Hickey with the shot. Not the best of shots from Hickey. And the Jez are able to defend on this occasion. And away comes Reed Spillane for the Jez. Tackled by Sophie Klein. Deemed to be a foul by Sophie Klein. And a bit of respite for this Jez side. It's Kelly now in possession. She tries to go long. It's half intercepted by Lee. She's unable to control it but wins the ball back. Illegally say the umpires. And it's Camille Keane in possession now for the Jez. She goes long. Good touch to O'Toole. But it's a good tackle by Claudia Griffin, good defending from the Crescent number five on a tool that time and she wins the free. Solid defensive work there from Crescent. It's going to be Griffin, plays it all the way back to Georgia Keane, just near the penalty spot in the Crescent D. Plays it to Emer Lane, Lane now opts to go to Claire O'Mara, good touch from O'Mara, sorry that's Amy O'Byrne. O'Byrne Plays it to Leahy and Ivan shakes his head next to me here in the commentary box. Again too easy for this Crescent team but a good intersection, interception from Cueva Cleary on that occasion from in the Jez defence. Plays the ball across, going to come out to this Kelly, it's well intercepted by Hickey. Chance for Crescent now, it's three on three, Hickey on the possession, plays the ball across. Chance here, big chance for Crescent, should have went herself, Hickey gets it and that's a fine finish from Aoife Hickey. Good build up play by Nicole Griffin. She was patient. She had the chance to shoot herself. She decided to give it to Jan Rush and Hickey. Good control from Hickey and a fine finish, Ivan. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great goal. Selfless play there just to lay that across and just make sure of the goal. 
Um, but again, so much space for Crescent to play. Um, you know, it's a matter of linking up two, three passes. And again, the attack, they're not even having to go out around the outside. Those attacks are coming in straight through the top of the D. Um, so that, that's a worrying sign. I think the key thing now for Crescent is, number one, this game is won. That's three points in the bag. You've got three goals on the board, which is, which is key. The key thing now for them is to manage their team so that, you know, if they can keep Horan off the pitch for a while, you know, some of the girls who didn't get many minutes yesterday, get them onto the pitch and keep kind of the likes of, you know, Leahy, uh, the likes of Horn, keep those guys as fresh as you possibly can because effectively now their game against uh, Kilkenny later on becomes a, becomes a final for them. So it, it's, you know, they've reduced a four-match a four match tournament into one match. So you, you've won the game, job done. Can you now manage your squad, keep players off the pitch and keep them as fresh as possible for that next game? Because Kilkenny will be going into that game. That's their first game in a day. So they'll be going into it fresh. Uh, Crescent are going into it with a game in their legs, which, which is significant. You know, you're playing your fourth game as opposed to your, your third. So uh, it's how they manage their squad, I think, here now is absolutely key. It's their last goal scorer, Reef Hickey, in possession now. She plays the ball right. That's Serena McDermott, one of the players, as I've mentioned, who hasn't got a huge amount of game time, but it'll be crucial for Crescent in saving some of the starting players' legs in throughout this game. But there's no doubt, as I've mentioned, Crescent aren't going to lose this game. They can afford to rest a few of their starters, you'd imagine, but it's Maeve McNamara looking to win that ball in around the D from McDermott's pass, but it's trailed all, trickled all the way wide, I should say. And it's going to be a restart for the Jazz all the way out over the baseline. And it's going to be Ethan McGovern, the Jazz captain, to restart play again up against Anna Horn. She decides to pass it away. It's intercepted though. Robin Lee, and there's a big chance here for Crescent. It's into Anna Horn. Chance for number four here for Crescent. Oh, it's just wide, a reverse from Anna Horn. Big, big chance for Crescent and one that Anna Horn would be disappointed she didn't finish. Yes, she will. No, that's a huge chance. 4-0 uh, up, but again, it's just straight down the middle. Straight down the middle of the D. Uh, they need to get... They, this, the, the Jazz sweeper needs to start stepping out here. They need to get a... They need to get... Like, their midfield are coming up very flat. They're playing quite flat. What they need is the centre mid to drop out a little bit and just screen in front of that back four and protect the middle of the pitch. So you need to set up a wedge with your two centre backs and the centre mid so that at least if the ball is coming into your D, it's coming into wide areas where it makes it easier for the keeper to, to handle those shots coming in. But at the moment... The, the Jez centre, centre mid is, is coming up quite flat with the two wide centre mids and it's just creating that huge hole in behind and, and the, the sweeper and centre back just aren't able to deal with that at the moment. Yeah, it's half time here in St Andrews College, the first game of day two of the Kate Russell tournament in Crescent College, easing to victory by the looks of things here. They lead 3-0 at half time. We'll be back with the second half shortly.